hello and welcome to my combined review uh, slash comparison of the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder and the Tascam DR60D. Um, a lot of people on the internet have been debating, including myself, which one of these two to go for. So I thought I'd get them both, have a little comparison between the two, um, let you guys see the advantages and disadvantages of both. Um, I'll tell you off the bat, I'm not an audio expert, I've only been reading up on it intensively for the last month or so, I've only done a few amateur stuff with it, I've been on a lot of big budget film sets, but I wasn't delving into it too much at the time, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what you get in the box to start off with. With the Tascam DR60D, comes in this box here. Nothing too fancy, just the name of the product. Delivered with a lovely dent, courtesy of Amazon. In the actual box, you get a mini USB cable to attach it to your computer. And when you've attached it to your computer, it can get, it can be powered by your computer instead of the, uh, or it can be powered via USB instead of the four uh, AA batteries that it needs. You get manuals in a bunch of languages, no CDs or anything in there. And as for the device itself, just for this isn't it, just for comparison's sake, there's a DVD just so people can get an idea of the size of the device. I know a lot of people think, and I thought myself, that it'd be a lot bigger than it actually is. This is it. This is a DVD. So you can see. It's not as big, fits in the palm of your hand as people would think. Um, has a bit of weight to it. Up top, you can put your camcorder straight on top and screw this in. You have the option to screw it straight onto a tripod, put your camcorder on top, and then you can glance very easily between the two. You can remove this with the four screws if you wanted to use the um, pegs here to have it hanging around your neck. Just a quick tour of the physical device. You have your battery compartment back here. It takes four AA batteries. Unfortunately with phantom power on both uh, XLR inputs you are looking at probably around two and a half hours. Um, this part of the audio, just for me to quickly say, this part of the audio has been recorded with my voice directly just speaking with the camera next to my head. I'm not using any audio capture device or anything like that, it's just my voice straight into the camera and later on when I test these I'll record my voice with this and the Zoom H6 as well. So on the side you have two XLR inputs uh, with a push to release which is handy, the Zoom H6 does not have this um, and of course you have your third and fourth input connecting such things as a lapel mic um, you have your camera in, your remote sold separately camera out and you have the volume for the camera out which is pretty useful and on the other side you have your power button, your hold, which again very useful. USB connects there, you've got your memory card here. Does not come with a memory card, so you'll need to get your own SD HD memory card. And it's only up to 32 gigs on this. On the Zoom H6, I believe it's up to 128 gig. You have your headphones with its own individual control and your line out and on the front of the device you have the gain controls for your XLR your two XLR inputs and inputs 3 and 4 are combined into one gain control phantom power is at the bottom your phantom power switch play pause slate key is very it's, it's brilliant I'm sure it's going to be implemented into all future devices as well saves you having told use an actual slate, just gives out a high pitch during your recording. Um, record button, you need to double tap this time your control knob and you click in to enter which is very very helpful uh, makes it very easy to navigate the menus. Let's just go ahead and turn it on so if we press that button, just so you can see how long it takes. There was recently a new firmware for this so if you do get this make sure that you update the firmware um, yep, so now you've just seen how long it takes to come on. 
Let's put this to one side and take a look at the physical aspects of the Zoom H6. This is the box of the Zoom H6 that it comes in. Records up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz audio. Um, with all these accessories you see here, it only comes with a mid side mic, or should I say, it comes with a mid side mic and the XY mic and uh, the windscreen. Everything else that you see on here you'll need to purchase separately. Oh, of course, it comes with a USB 2 cable and the SD memory card as well. So let's uh, show you what you get in the box. It comes in this lovely little hard plastic case. It's one other thing, you do get a bunch of manuals in here and you do get uh, that piece of software as well if you wanted to use it. So this is what it comes in. So if we go ahead and open this up. So you get your windscreen and you get your mid-side mic. All of the attachments have a very solid metal feel to them. They're not they don't feel plasticky at all and you get a little protector for the connection get your mini USB cable like with the Tascam and your XY mic all with their own individual gain controls and you can change that from, I don't know if you can quite see that it says 90, you can change that to 120 to get a greater field and finally is the Zoom H6 itself so let's go ahead and grab that DVD again show you what it's like size wise let's go ahead and zoom out and next to the Tascam this is what it's like so Doesn't, that groove there doesn't really help too much in holding it in your hand in a usable position because you always end up just gliding it up to there anyway. Um, yeah, so you can see all in all I would say the Tascam is a little bit heavier. Now let's go ahead and see how long this takes to turn on. There we go. For users of the Zoom H4, I think that'll be quite a relief uh, knowing that it turns on so much quicker now. Um, so let's take a look at this device. The display, unfortunately, everything I've read has proven to be true. When you go outdoors with this display, it does become pretty useless. Um, you can't really read the display. Um, I also found when I attach the module here to record myself for a podcast holding it like this you can't actually see the display so you can't actually see the uh, meter on here to see if you're you know if you're going to distort or not see if you're going to peak so that's a bit of a bummer but let's take a look at the device straight off the bat the main thing is going to be it has four XLR inputs instead of the two now the Tascam does have four channel recording. This has six, up to six, because you can get the attachment for the other two XLR inputs. Um, they do not have the clip, so if you tug on a cable that's on this, it'll come straight out. Uh, haven't really had that be an issue so far. Um, so yeah, you have your two XLR inputs, you have your speaker on the back, so you can hear back recordings. Not the most powerful thing as you can imagine. Attach this to a tripod if you want, and on the side you have your menu button and you navigate through the menus using this here might be a bit easier to see this here and you push in to select um, this is a bit easier to use on the Tascam to be honest with you you have your USB connection there and it's also your power connection on the bottom you have the remote and the line out you can use these here if you want to hang this around your neck. Uh, you have hold here. Hold does not, unfortunately, hold the dials here. So, unfortunately, um, what we've found a couple of times is while we've been recording, 
just by putting it in a bag it moves now instead of putting I mean you do have these protectors here but it will still move around a bit uh, what we've done is instead of putting duct tape over this and risk damaging the finish on the sides um, we just take a iPhone and take a picture of exactly where all the settings are so when you go back you can replicate it as close as you possibly can um, okay so you have your volume control your SD card slot now this takes SDXC uh, up to SDXC and for some reason it comes with a micro SD adapter and you actually get one of these 2 gig not quite sure why they chose to do that Put that back in um, and up the top you have your connector where you connect the modules now one of the big advantages of the Tascam is that it records a backup track at a lower level so if you peak um, while you're recording an actor say somebody shouts in the scene if it, if it peaks you can go to the backup track this does have a backup track I've seen it advertised on their website but what they fail to tell you is it only has a backup track when you're using this thing. So if you plug in an XLR mic on the side, it w while these are all phantom powered as well as um, the ones on the Tascam, the difference is um, with these, the backup track, it does not come from these. It only comes from the top module. Um, so that's pretty disappointing and makes it borderline useless. I mean, you can use these and attach it. I've seen a couple of people attach these to boom mics and use these as a direct recorder but it's kind of useless because you can't actually see the levels um, other than that headphone input, volume control, hold that is pretty much it looks wise between the two devices so now that you've seen the two devices we're going to go ahead and go through the menu system in the next video and you can take a look